Good evening. This is uh, Professor John Kroling from Los Mandela University here in Quebec. Uh, I've decided to make a recording of tonight's session and then uh, you will be watching it on YouTube. Just give me a, a second to start sharing my PowerPoint. Okay. So before I talk about our teacher support system, just something, some background on uh, the uh, Tangible Africa project. Uh, it started with a project developed by a postgrad student at Nelson Mandela University. And the focus is on experiential problem solving uh, compared to root learning or factual problem solving. So we try to get learners to interact while they learn. The tangible project from the outset in 2017 uh, had these main objectives that we want to introduce coding to learners without the use of electricity, the internet, as well as computer labs. Uh, we also decided that we want to have it no budget or low budget so that schools are not excluded. As little as possible schools are excluded because of finances. We also experience that many teachers are intimidated by computers, etc., if they've never worked on them or taught on them. So we try to make it low barrier of entry for teachers. We try to make it fun, but we also do our best to make it good quality. The training objectives is in when we do our training is to demystify coding. We always say that within the first 20 minutes, teachers must say, but I can do this. It's not a, it's not impossible because we, fun is important. Gamification is always for us critical. And then our main flagship project is, is a mobile app that uses physical tokens. So this is one of our games where you need to move your car to a destination, to the, in this case, the end line of the Grand Prix. You pack out commands, move forward, turn left, etc., with physical tokens, take a photo of it. It's then internalized on the screen and those commands moves your car. So this is an example of learners uh, participating at the Amazon Skills Center in Washington, D.C. when we were there in August. So you'll see uh, the learners playing. So they use those physical tokens uh, which they pack their code, you'll see they interact with their phones to see their challenge, take the photo, then execute, and their car will move after they've packed the code. So you'll see also it's group activity. It's very important for us to get the learners to play in groups. And this game is, is relevant from grade four upwards. This is our uh, tangible chess interactive game, which is great fun and learners really participate. So everything we do is about interaction and group activity. Our educational objectives are obviously to introduce coding concepts and in able to do that, we believe in scaffolding, making things start easy and then getting more complicated, uh, group work, as well as problem solving. But for us, it's more important than just teaching coding. The, they call it the 21st century skills like strategy, problem solving, critical thinking, reasoning are the skills that we like to enhance. And the, the main word here is computational thinking. If you if you can look at the, the curriculum from grade R up to grade nine, computational thinking is a, is a golden thread throughout the curriculum. Our project has reached over 150,000 learners across Africa, Europe, uh, Asia, and as well as North America. So we will be having our world championship soon, and we've got learners participating from across the world. Our big flagship project is the 18 July Mandela Day project, uh, where this year we had 32,000 learners participating at about 100 sites from two different contents, continents. And on the 5, 5th of December, we will have teams participating in a virtual tournament from across the world, from as far as North America to, to Asia. Right, so if we get to the curriculum, just my first comments on the curriculum. Uh, I've got a very big respect for the people that compiled the curriculum, that wrote it. They are real educationists. 
and I believe it's important uh, that they were in part of the curriculum. I believe it's a very good curriculum. What's important for me is that there's less focus on technology and a better focus on problem solving than, for example, what you would so see in the draft curriculum. Very important for especially rural communities is that the foundation phase from grade R to three is unplugged. That means you don't need computer labs and expensive devices to present the curriculum. Uh, and the senior phase, unfortunately, will need some devices, but also for me, very important is that they use block coding. You must have heard about Scratch, and what we do is also block coding. Uh, and there's no conventional coding like Python and Java and C Sharp, which me, makes me very happy as a, as a professor in coding. I honestly believe that uh, learners, especially in primary school up to grade nine, rather need to use coding to, to get to grips with the coding concepts, but they really do not need to become conventional software developers. So the current concerns that you probably experience in all your schools is that uh, teachers are very un uncertain. I, I accept that, that a vast majority of teachers have never worked with coding, so this brings fear with them. A lot of uh, educational departments across the country have seen budget cuts, even um, retrenchment of teachers. So teachers and schools are overburdened. Therefore, the curricula is seen in a very negative light. It's this uncertainty that's going to bring more work. And therefore, many schools have said, we are doing nothing until it's rolled out in 2026. Now, I'd like to talk something about that, why I believe it is important for us to start at least. So I wrote this article in the Daily Maverick about a month ago. And what I'm saying in the rest of the presentation is basically a summary of this article. So why should we start? Why should you as a teacher start in your school, even if it's not being rolled out next year? And these are quotes that I got from teachers that some of them already started four or five years ago and not only in fancy schools. So most of these teachers are in disadvantaged communities where they don't have computer labs. So it's, coding is dynamic, it's engaging, it's fun. It's about playing games, doing activities, having discussions and tackling problems. So these, if you look at the photos on the right hand side, you not, don't see people sitting in front of computers. And we strongly believe in that philosophy. We equip learners to approach real world challenges more effectively. What you see on the right hand side is a mobile app which learners developed at Robben Island in September within four days after do, doing our design thinking module, which is also part of the curriculum. Uh, this learner was asked uh, in close to Mtata in August why she think coding is important. And without preparing, this is what she answered immediately. It made me think, like it makes you imagine things. It makes you think before you even do something or before you even say something, we first have to think, okay, I'm in this situation and how should I navigate? Oh, I, I see, I've seen, um, I've been playing a level in um, Rangers and I'm noticing, like, oh, this is how I'm supposed to move. And that's it. It just helps you generally in decision making, not just in school, but also outside because you get to see a pattern between everything that is happening. So, okay, right now to start with this, I have to move like this in a, in a correct sequence so that whenever I make a decision, decisions are correlated into what I want and that right there won't only help me in school only but even outside school so that is why I see coding as an important tool even to everyone because imagine if a, a five-year-old understands this or a seven-year-old understands this then the, he or she will navigate the world knowing that this is a sequence I have to do this this is how I can make things a lot shorter so, so what she summarizes here is that any learner from five years old that's taught coding and the logic behind coding has a skill now that, that teaches them also skills in real life. So it's not just about what you teach, what you learn at school. And then very important, we all know the curriculum is coming. It's going to come in 26. If you're a grade four teacher, it's going to come in 27. So it's coming. It's inevitable. So what the teachers are saying, let's start so long. Let's prepare ourselves so long for that which is coming. And, and while we do not have uh, the fear of a, of a curriculum, let's start and prepare ourselves and our learners. So if you start now, you don't have any formal assessments. 
Uh, you don't have a curriculum to follow strictly. You've got a curriculum that can guide you. There's no pressure. And you can have fun while you do it in your school. Uh, and that is, for me, is one of the main reasons for schools to start so long. Very important. I think many of you have heard about ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. People are saying that coding is not necessary anymore. And this article was published two weeks ago by the Google's head of research. And he says, everybody should learn how to code. In fact, the basics may be more important now than ever. Perhaps even more so now, there are going to be many more opportunities to actually build on that. So what he's saying is that the logic of coding, understanding coding, is simply becoming more and more important. While we have AI that sometimes writes code for us, in any career it's becoming more and more important to have the logic of coding for the 21st century. So where do we start when we teach coding? I'm very serious about this, not in a lab. Even if you have a computer lab, you do not need to start, and we recommend that you don't start in a lab. If your school needs to buy stuff, go low budget. Don't spend thousands and thousands of rands on starting coding. Find a tool or some lessons that is low barrier of entry for your teacher. Don't make the teacher, not intimidate them. Don't make them scared. Make them enjoy it. And then again, I keep on repeating, whatever you do when you start with coding in your school, make it fun and interactive. And then the most obvious place to start is the actual curricular documents, the CAPS documents. If you just open them and start reading through them, you will see there's a lot of things there that are very simple to implement and it will help you to start. So don't be intimidated by the document. I've seen many curricula at schools and I can safely say that this is one of the best and one of the easiest to follow for teachers, especially when you're not pressured by a, an official curriculum and assessments, etc. So that brings us to the Tangible Teacher Support Program of Tangible Africa, in which we are going to do our best next year from, from early January to guide teachers weekly in getting to grips with the curriculum. So what will be the features of this project? And while I'm talking, you'll see there's a barcode on the right-hand side. If you haven't registered for this curriculum or for this project, you can use this barcode or I'll give you an email address at the end. There will be no cost involved. Every lesson that we send you will be aligned with the curriculum. You'll receive weekly lessons via email and we're also now looking at sending them via WhatsApp and we're even looking at a chatbot. So you will electronically be receiving your lessons every week. You will not need any prior coding experience. We've tested these lessons on teachers that have never coded before, and they can, um, they can do that. As part of the project, we will guide you to an online module based on demystifying coding. Uh, and if you do that module, it has been SACE accredited, uh, and it's manually uh, moderated when you're done. And then we give you a certificate, which I believe you can submit for your CPD points. The teachers that participate in the first term, because on a weekly basis, we will ask you to feedback what you've done, etc. We'll start qualifying for physical tools that we will be sending to schools across the country. And then every term, there will be a 5,000 Rand lucky draw for everyone that gave us feedback. So this is just one example. This would be a, a lesson for grade ones. Uh, so you would say to yourself, I want to get to the apple on that grid. Just want to take you back. So if you want to get uh, to the eggs, for example, from the trolley, it's move forward, move forward, turn left, move forward, move forward. And then the kids will be able to cut out these little pieces, stick them into the boxes to get to the eggs. I don't have time to go to this in detail, but this is directly aligned to the foundation phase curriculum. And there will be two to three pages to explain to you as a teacher how to implement it in your class. Uh, for, the, for the elder kids, grade four and five upwards, this, for example, is a lesson on the while loop, uh, which might sound to, like Greek to you now. But if you read through the lesson, 
it guides you very carefully on how to start with a while loop and how to implement it. And then you'll see for each lesson, it will say to you how it's linked to the curriculum. C1 and C2 are, are actual components of the curriculum. It will give you objectives, what you want to reach, do during that lesson. It will tell you which resources you need, which we will email to you that you can print and cut out. Sometimes it's resources that you will have in class. So according to me, as far as I can see, none of these lessons will ask you to buy anything. You'll get them for free. You'll print them out, cut them out, and you can implement them. Uh, and then what we also do is, uh, especially for foundation phase, there's different groups. So you can divide your class into, say, three groups who do different activities. And then there's also examples for how to assess your lessons. I'm not going through the detail. I just want to show you the, the components involved in these lessons. So how do we add value as Tangible Africa while you're doing these lessons? You'll get lessons from many sources. As I say, especially in the first term next year and hopefully the whole year, it will be no budget. It won't cost you anything, just printing. We have at least five qualified teachers working on these lessons with over 100 years of experience in class. Every year we have our Coding for Mandela tournament, so your learners will be able to participate in national as well as global events. So they will be part of a global movement uh, across the world. And then we also have mobile applications that work on any basic smart device to make the teaching much more fun. Those, those will be introduced mainly from, say, the second term. Uh, I just want to show you this short video to, sh to show you how kids... Tangible do. teaches coding concepts without the use of computers. This promotes computational and design thinking, collaboration, creativity, and communication, all while having fun and playing games. How does it work? Learners identify a problem on a screen. They put the device down and then build a solution with our customized puzzle pieces. They use the device to then test their solution. The device internalizes the code from the puzzle pieces and then executes the code to see if they got it right. Because it's a game, they don't mind failing and trying again, building up that character that never quits. On top of being super fun and engaging, these concepts are aligned with critical learning standards of the school curriculum, making it relevant for any classroom. The great thing about starting tangible coding clubs at your school is that you are instantly connected to a community of schools on a global stage and can compete in our annual Coding World Cup. At Tangible, we believe that the concepts coding provides are the building blocks in the classroom to teach learners creative problem solving, which is a key skill set for the future. Tangible teaches coding. Tangible. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if you've watched this on YouTube, you're welcome to email me or to scan in that uh, QR code if you want to register for the online lessons starting next term. And do that as soon as possible. We, are, we plan to send, send out sample lessons uh, as soon as next week. Uh, and then the games that you saw now, the, ten, the coding games, we will start with that in the lessons probably in the second term. And teachers that participate in the first term, the first thousand, We'll be getting those games for free. Uh, we'll courier them to you. Thank you very much for, for watching this. And you are welcome to email me or even send me a WhatsApp. I'm also on Facebook as well as on LinkedIn.